Okay. Today's a mental health day. Ha! <laughs> that means all I have to do is whatever the hell I want to do. And for me, that means getting out of the house, getting on the creek. And what I've been hoping for has been a nice big rain. Here we are, nice big rain. And I only saw like four people. And after it started raining, I saw a few people on bikes. I did not see anybody wearing a mask, which was nice. You know, that's the thing. If you stay online, in Facebook in particular, you think everybody is wearing a mask. The people that post stuff are like wearing masks. So you think everybody does. And then there's, you know, your few friends that are very vocal about that's stupid. Because it is stupid. I'm one of those friends that's very vocal about not doing it. I mean, I have a valid reason for not doing it, but I mean, I think everybody does. Do you know the studies that everyone's been coming out with for the past week? Well, I knew about these studies long ago because when I knew this would be an issue, what did I do? I looked it up. And what did every single study say? No efficacy. In other words, not gonna do a damn thing for you. I haven't really seen any studies that say that um, masks will actually do you harm, I mean, as far as breathing, as far as oxygenation. I could be wrong, you know, I haven't really looked that up specifically, but there are other reasons for not wearing it. Bacterial infection would be my number one. I mean, not me personally, but that's what I've seen. Most people that wear masks end up with bacteria from all over the place on them because they're constantly touching the damn things. You know, if you're gonna wear one, don't touch the face of the mask at all. At all. The nurse at my doctor's office was wearing a mask and not only was she touching the mask with her fingers, and I mean the front of the mask, the sides of the mask, every bit of the mask with her hands, 11 times in about as many minutes, not only was she doing that, but a couple of times she took the pen and pushed it up against the side of her nose. Who else was touching that pen before her? You know that's not her own very personal pen. And it's a medical office. What do you see there, sick people? Not that I think you're going to be passing on any kind of a virus, but you will pass on a bacterial infection. When my son was in middle school, we did this... Uh, experiment for his science project and it was doorknobs and other nasty surfaces in what we used as a public bathroom we had a bathroom downstairs it was well, you know one of those half baths and we let people come in there and use that just anybody pretty much could use that toilet so for a week i think it was a week it might have been 10 days we didn't clean that bathroom at all. It had, like, we had hazardous waste tape up and you know, I don't remember how many days or how many times, I think it was like five or seven, that we actually got Petri dishes from the health department. They were so nice about right. it. They gave us these uh, things. And then he would test the doorknob, test the toilet, test whatever, and label the Petri dish, you know, he put the uh, whatever he found and then it was grow and then he would look at what type of bacteria does this look like and we put it into uh, <laughs> this is the funniest part when he took the experiment to school they didn't want to let him use it because it was hazardous waste they said but you know what science what's wrong with that and it's not like we had anything open it was all sealed up it was all like it should have been I think they were afraid kids would mess with it because that's what kids do. They were like 12. It's pretty funny. Yeah, all that bacteria. All kinds. It was mostly yeast. We saw a lot of strep and we saw staph because that's what people have on their bodies. All kinds. Staph and, staph and strep mostly and yeast. Anyway, the point is, the point is, every human being carries bacteria with himself or herself. If you touch anything, anything at all, any surface, 
you're going to leave, be leaving bacteria and be picking up bacteria, especially common surfaces like we did the doorknob, the faucets, and the toilet handle. And that was it. That was it. Without cleaning it, I think it was like 10 days. But it you know, hadn't been cleaned after people had been there. So, yeah, I want you to think about that. Anytime you touch a door handle, anytime you wash your hands at somebody else's sink, I don't care if they have cleaners going through there all the time. A lot of those cleaners don't clean very well, no matter where you are. And I hate to tell you this, but hospitals, uh, medical centers, <laughs> oh, doctor's offices, they're the dis most disgusting places. They clean less than anybody, I swear to God. I mean, the places where you don't want to be touching your face after you touched anything at is the doctor's office. Don't when even... I wash my hands at the doctor's office, I don't, I don't turn off the faucet with my hands. I use my elbows because I am not, not going to pick up infections there. But other people will because they don't think about it twice, especially the nurses and the doctors who work there. They don't even consider what they're doing. It's like disgusting, man. Put on your mask. <laughs> Wash your damn hands a lot and clean the doorknobs. Ugh. And don't share pens. You're a lot better off not sharing pens than you are putting on a mask. If you pick up somebody's pen and you have a mask on your face, that's gonna, whatever's on that pen is gonna surely, it's gonna end up on your face. That's gross. It's another reason to not wear a stupid mask. It's not going to help you, and it might hurt you. Especially going to hurt you if you're hanging out in doctor's offices or if you are a doctor. So, now I have, Lee, I have a real problem with a, an infection that I've had since about, it was 2000, and, I can't remember if it was 2008 or 2010. I've had some uh, reconstruction done to my face and I've had more than 40 surgeries. Sucks for me. <laughs> but when the um, surgeon removed the joints that somebody else put in back in 1995, he said, oh, I can put some bone cement in there in the meantime. And I said, don't ever do that to me because I'm highly allergic to that stuff. And he said, oh, okay, I didn't realize. Okay, well, I won't do that. Well, guess what? When I was totally knocked out of sleep he used bone cement shoved it all in there after he moved my jaw joints and when I woke up I was in such extreme pain like everything was on fire inside of my head I've never had that much pain after a surgery and I've had a lot of surgeries more than 40 I couldn't get them to do anything to make the pain go away. And they're like, we've given you too many drives. I'm like, well, it's still like, oh my God, I can't take it. Get me out of here. And then the stress of just being there, it was horrible. I actually walked out of that hospital right after surgery. And the stuff that they're doing to people now medically, they did to me. And it was horrible. It was really horrible. They physically took me down right after I'd had surgery. So that was like nuts. And then they called in a shrink and he's like, oh, we don't want to make sure you don't want to kill yourself or anybody else. I'm like, dude, uh, I just want out of here because I am in so much pain and nobody's doing anything to help me. And he's like, well, they've already done it. I'm like, no, that's not helping me, whatever it is they're doing. And come to find out, um, it was actually the bone cement that they put in there that was creating such horrific, horrific pain for me. That, that stuff just wouldn't go away for the longest time. And I finally got another surgeon in Massachusetts to remove it. But the problem is a lot of it had broken off. And so it's all over my jaw, like in different areas where it's settled. And there's one place in particular where it's settled where the, the uh, newer jaw joint attaches very close to my lower part of my face closer to my chin than it is to the actual, um, my ear, let's say, the jaw joint where you would think it would be. And if I have any pressure at all, and I mean just even light pressure on that part of my face, it blows up, it gets infected and it blows up and then it's, you know, my nodes are swollen, my glands are swollen, it's horrific. 
and it's huge. It, it like blows up twice the size in no time. This is why physically, medically, mechanically, I should not be wearing a mask at all. I put one on about, it's about 10 or 11 days ago for maybe 30 minutes. It might have been longer, I don't know. I, th I would say 30 minutes. And it was constricting the movement of my jaw. And it was enough, it was enough pressure for um, within like eight hours, my whole face was blown up again. And that's why I should never wear a mask. It doesn't mean that anybody else should wear a mask. It means I cannot, I should not, and it could actually kill me because the infection has, in my case, gone systemic more than once. I've been put on a pick line for a year, a year of going to the hospital. First, it was every day, twice a day. <laughs> that was for months. And then finally, for the rest of the year, they fixed it, so I only had to go in every three days, two or three days, I can't remember, just to get the antibiotics filled in, and then sometimes to get the pick line replaced. That was hell, and it was because it went to my heart. I just don't need that again. I don't want to go through that crap again. And I don't want to have the jaw joint removed. The doctor that made them for me, the joint maker, he's dead anyway. The surgeon that put him in for me, he's retired now just like two years ago. So I don't have a surgeon. I don't have anyone to make these joints for me. So I'm kind of screwed. I don't want to have it removed and then just not have a jaw. It's bad enough what I go through, but I don't want to go through that. And it's not like a room with a jaw joint is going to remove that uh, bone cement that's still in there. And it migrates. It moves. And I never know exactly where it's going to be. It's, but it seems like it has settled right in there where the whatever, where the bone holds the lower part of the mandible. So I'm screwed. And so when I have idiots telling me, well, just put on a mask, I want to say, you know what, just fuck off. In fact, I do sometimes say, just fuck off, because they don't have a clue. They are such narcissistic little assholes that they only see what's behind their own mask. That's as far as they get. They don't care what's going on with anybody else but themselves. And they believe, because they're total freaking idiots, they believe that a mask is going to save them. It's not. Besides, if they thought a mask was going to save them, then why are they also social distancing? Why do they want... Oh, this is the kind of the craziest shit. Not only are they agreeing with Fauci on this put on goggles, because I think, oh my gosh. But not only are they agreeing with that, but they actually want to distance from people by 30 feet. Outdoors, 30 feet. That's how whacked out insane these people are. They're as stupid as stupid can be. And they're telling us what to do? What the hell, man? I really don't think so. I'm not gonna have some total tell me I should be doing this, that, or the other. I don't know. So today was a mental health day, like I said. It was a day that I decided, take a break. Get out in nature. And this is what nature gave me, which is great. I actually love, love, love the rain. I love standing in the rain. I love shooting video of rain. I like everything about it. Got no issue with the rain. And I especially love the thunder and lightning. It is so cool. I love the rain, but I don't want to get out in it. Like, I'm under a bridge. Because <laughs> I'm such a baby. I might melt, you know, because I'm, I'm so sweet, too. Aww. Hoping you're having a good day. If you're in Facebook, get out. Get out of Facebook! Seriously, get out of Facebook. <sighs> if I didn't do that, I think I was going to go crazy. The longer I stay in Facebook, the less likely I am to get out of the house. And that's not good for anyone. Because then I end up being a total bitch to everybody. Not that some don't deserve it, mind you. Some certainly do. Uh, yeah, I need to do this like every day. This should be my lunch. Okay, you guys. Do yourself a huge favor. Get out. Step outside. Speaking of which, tomorrow would be the day to step outside and go to your uh, government office with maybe a sign or 
just maybe your phone, you know, and shoot some video and say, listen, we're tired of the lies. Knock it off. We know you're lying. We're not idiots. That's all you need to do. Take a video. Send me a link to it. I'll post it, okay? All right, cool. Have a good one. Bye.